Welcome friends to another r slash pro revenge video. As always, if you enjoy these videos, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Our first story of the day is by Fanatic Cake. Bully my brother? Guess you won't know who blew up the toilet. This is not my story, but from my educational advisor, one of the legit funniest people I've ever met. The other day we were talking about our school times and the differences between being educators and students when she started telling this story. She used to be the model student, getting along with all the teachers and getting the best grades in her classroom, but there was that one teacher she could not get along with. It was her chemistry teacher and she described her as, all teachers have to find that breaking point where they just start screaming, but hers was incredibly easy to find. Until the point of that start of the story, she was just an unlike teacher and someone my advisor just dealt with. But one day, she reached her breaking point when her brother told me this teacher, which I'm going to be calling her rude teacher, was calling him stupid and screaming at him for not knowing an answer she hadn't even explained properly yet. That was when she got involved in a plan. The famous toilet bomb. Because of the shared gender with the teacher, she knew where and when rude teacher would use the restroom. She had a strange routine with the exact time and stall she used to use, and because she, as a model student, she could come and go without being even noticed, since no one would assume she was up to no good. Thing is, the whole class was in on it. Before she got involved with the plan though, there was one single condition. No one would rat or blame anyone else. No one was supposed to say anything. She had a plan. And to the toilet the bomb went. My advisor went to the stall, installed the toilet bomb, and went back to class at the exact time Rude Teacher had her restroom break. When she came back from doing the deed, she sits down at her desk and hears the explosion, followed by Rude Teacher screaming bloody murder and coming back to class to scream at them. The only classroom that was on break for teacher transition was my advisor's class, so Rude Teacher beelined straight to them and started demanding to know who did this. Of course, radio silence. She jumped in anger like a toddler, made all the threats she could legally do, and made the biggest tantrum you could imagine, while being absolutely soaked in toilet water. Radio silence. The next logical step for Rude Teacher was to call the principal, that arrived at the class with a box filled with pieces of paper. She explained that everyone was to write the name of someone involved in the toilet bomb and put it there to be taken and read by her at the end of class. That was when my advisor stepped in. The second the principal was out of the class, she told everyone to just write, It was me, in capital letters, and put the paper back in the box, which everyone did. When the principal came back and started looking at the papers in front of the class, she slowly turned from a normal color to a deep fiery red and started throwing her own tantrum. Guess they found out her breaking point and did the only thing she could do at that point. She suspended the whole god darn class for three days. In the end, my advisor did everything, blew up the toilet, led the class to not snitch on anyone, and earned three days at home without no one suspecting anything. Let me ask you guys, did you ever get in trouble in school growing up? Let me know in the comments down below. This next story is by Tazbaran1981, eat my food and you can make your own pizza. My dad is an incredibly selfish and very lazy person. He will take the easy option even if it inconveniences someone else. He doesn't care as long as he doesn't have to do much. I had started a diet, so I'd made some prepped meals to take to work. Anyone who's ever been on a diet knows how hard it is and how touchy you have to be about your food. I'm very fussy about what I eat and will only microwave certain foods. My dad knows this. I've made some pasta up and put them in the refrigerator. Some were marked with a P for pork, the others were chicken and weren't marked. I went to my sister's for a couple of days and took some of the meals with me. The rest I left at home in the fridge. These were for taking to work for the rest of the week. My dad knew this. I came home at the weekend and as it was my cheat day I was going to make pizza for the family. I make my own dough and sauce for this. I go to the fridge to get the stuff out to start making the sauce and half my meals are gone. I call my dad and ask him, did you take meals out of my fridge? Dad says, I thought I could have them because they didn't have a pee on them. I hung up on him when he said that. He had been told by me more than once to not touch any of them. I was fuming at this. He knew exactly what he was doing, but did it anyway because as I said, he is extremely selfish. I text my mom about what he did. 
I don't call her when she's at work unless it's an emergency as she's a nurse and it doesn't look professional answering her phone. She was on a break and called me straight away. She told me she had questioned him when she saw him taking my meals and his response was I'd said he could. At this point, I have steam coming out of my ears as he is royally screwed with my diet. My meals have all been measured so as not to go over my calorie intake for the day. I had also prepped for the week so I wouldn't have an excuse to be lazy and grab junk. Now I'm down half of my meals for the week and won't have time to prep anymore because I have other things to be doing as well as making the pizza for my family. Then the light bulb moment happens. He took my food because he was too lazy to make his own lunch. Well, have fun making your own pizza. I made everyone else's pizza and left him the dough for his in a bowl and enough sauce in a side dish to put on his pizza. He was going to be back late and I knew he would be expecting his pizza waiting for him already cooked so all he had to do was reheat it. I told my mom what I was doing and why. She happily signed off on it as she knew my dad would not make his own and thought it would teach him a lesson. I wasn't there when he got home because I would have thrown something at him. My mom told me that he wasn't happy to come home after being out all day. He wasn't at work, just out at one of his many hobbies that cost a fortune, and finding out he had to make his own pizza. He didn't, and just had soup from a can. However, the next time I saw him, I got the first and only apology from him that I can ever remember. I guess the moral of this story is, if somebody's being selfish, Don't let them get away with it or find some kind of repercussion that just hopefully bothers them enough to open their eyes as to, hey, maybe I should stop doing this selfish stuff. Or, hey, maybe I should be a little bit more considerate. And our next story is by Prox. Spam and attempt to scam my emails? Let's see how you like it. I'm not sure where I picked it up from, but recently I started getting a lot of spam emails from what appears to be the same person. They all have the same text, even if they come from different addresses. Hello, Mr. Radiant, or unusual adjective. I am supple lady, please email me for pictures. I've received the email from a number of different ladies, Miss Mia, Miss Elena, and so on, but they all ask me to contact them on the same return address. I realize the reply address appears to be a personal email address, it's a Gmail account, and presumably a person checks the email inbox to see if there's any replies. I'm sure it'd be very difficult to find people inquiring about their scams if, say, they were receiving a lot of spam themselves. A few years ago, SpamYourEnemies.com closed down, a service which would take supplied email addresses and give them to mailing lists and other spam-heavy services. It's gone now, but there's other similar websites, which I won't name here just to be safe, which cater to people calibrating spam filters or who need lots of mail to test email inboxes. So that one spammer's email address? I hope they enjoy having it appear on over 1900 mailing lists. They're still spamming me unfortunately, but recently the reply email address changed. In fact, it's changed three times now, and seems to happen shortly after I submit the latest one. Well, I suppose as long as it isn't too much work on you to pop their email into this mailing list spammer, it could be an easy way to just give some small semblance of payback to these people. At the worst, you're making them use their backup accounts or make a new account all over again. Slow them down, annoy them. I agree, let's see how they do like it. Our next story is by Oi Laura, Mutiny at the Dinner Table. I'm reminded of an incident back in the 70s when my mom got a job in the evenings two nights a week. My dad would come home from work, mom would have the dinner ready. All I had to do was set the table, put the food out, and clean up afterwards. As the only girl, of course, I was responsible for getting dinner on the table and cleaning up afterward. It's important to note that there was a certain routine to our meals when we were kids. There were always comments, never malicious but almost always annoying, when we would drop food, spill milk, talk too much, tease each other, kick each other under the table, standard kid stuff. Things like, can you keep the food in your mouth, don't talk while you're eating, that sort of thing. My dad was a great guy, still is actually. However, he could be a little short-tempered with five kids ranging from 9 to 16 frolicking around. At the end of every meal, when mom was home, when we were done eating, mom and dad would announce that they're taking their coffee into the living room and for you kids to please clean up the kitchen. So one night, my next youngest brother and I decided to mutiny. We set the table so that I sat at mom's spot, and at the end of the table, he sat at dad's spot at the end. 
dad had to sit on the side bench. He took it in good humor, kept a good attitude, and we proceeded to berate him with all the comments that they used to make to us. Same as above. Don't talk while you're reading. Can you keep the food in your mouth? Stop kicking your brother. Kind of stuff. There was a 50-50 shot that he would go along with it and laugh, or that he would lose his temper. We knew we were taking our chances. At the end of the meal, I made eye contact with my brother at the other end of the table. We picked up our milk glasses and told Dad, We're going to have our milk in the living room. Please clean up the kitchen. Of course, the look on his face was priceless. Nevertheless, he did it. We were stunned. We thought for sure he would have gotten very angry and pulled rank. One final thing, my mom is as particular about house cleaning. Everything has to be just so. It took me months before mom could come home from work and not find something I missed. So now dad gets to clean the kitchen. Come 10 o'clock, mom comes home, looks around, and starts picking at all the things dad missed. He fixed it all. I'm sure we explained to her what happened, but it sure was a fun night of mutiny. I don't think we ever had the courage to try it again, but once was surely enough. Is it weird that I kind of almost get a sad feeling from the fact that they said, I don't think we ever had the courage to try it again? Like, did the dad instill that much fear, or was it just like such a nerve-wracking thing to demand that they clean up the kitchen? Either way, you would just kind of love to see a little bit more fun exchange going on between them. And our final story of the day is by Nurse Engineers. A calculated response. While I was taking some math credits that were required for my associate's degree, I had the opportunity to sit beside an international student who refused to get his own calculator. He had noticed that I generally carried two calculators in my book bag and would always insist that I should loan him one of mine so he could use it on the tests. The reason I had two calculators was this took place when they all had big red numeric displays that ate batteries like popcorn. It has been a few years since I got that degree. At first, I was nice about it and loaned him the one that had a cleaner way to enter the data. Because of this, I started carrying my calculator with the non-functional subtract key as the second backup. I didn't see this as a problem because subtracting something was the same as adding a negative. One day, I overheard him talking to another international student calling me stupid for loaning him my calculator. I wasn't going to take this quietly. The friendly calculator would let you key in 7 minus 3 equals 4. The one I generally used had what was called reverse Polish notation, so the same problem was keyed in as 3 enter, 3 minus, and 4 would pop up on the screen. The one with the broken subtract key would have to be entered 7 plus negative 3 equals 4. The next test rolled around, and as always, he wanted to borrow my calculator. I made up some story about forgetting the easy one at home and handed him the one with the broken subtract key. I figured a clever chap like him would have no problem. It was pretty funny to watch him repeatedly mash the broken key. When he handed it back to me after the test, he said something in his home language and I doubt it translated to best friend. For the next test, he made it plain he didn't want the one with the broken key. He wanted my other one. Oh my, such a shame. I didn't get new batteries for the friendly one. He didn't care. He wanted my other one. I handed him the one with the reverse notation without telling him how to use it. He was even more frustrated this time. The next test, he brought his own calculator. I definitely think this is a little bit of a roundabout way to get to the destination you're wanting to go to, when he could have just gone on a straight line and said, Hey, I heard what you said, and I'm not giving you a calculator anymore. That said though, this is a much more funnier result. Being able to casually breeze through your test while you know how to use the thing, and looking over and this person's like, why isn't this stupid button working? Just wanna subtract the number from the other number and I can't do it. Then the next time it's like, okay bro, I don't want that broken subtract key one, give me the other one. Fast forward and, oh god, this thing doesn't even work in general. Honestly, it's nice to help people out, but at some point, I would be like, bro, you can't rely on me to bring supplies for you every single test. Bring your own. I guess in the end, you could say OP's revenge towards the sky was very calculated. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. 
Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.